In September of 2013, so this recent past September, the Dominican Constitutional Tribunal ruled to strip citizenship from over 200,000 of its own citizens. This decision um, was issued by our Supreme Court in the Dominican Republic, the Constitutional Tribunal, and they were looking at a case of a young woman that was being denied her ID card. Um, which is a, a national ID card in the Dominican Republic uh, allows you to engage in pretty much anything. Go to school, vote, um, hold down most, most jobs, uh, get married, and to register your children when they're born. Dominicans that they work for the government, they have paid taxes, they have contributed to the, to, um, you know, to the country, and now they, they cannot you know, renew their documents when they were given their documents when they were born, when they were get to get their cellula, the identity card. So whose fault is it? Is it is mainly the government if why are you giving their documents and now you, you creating this ruling to take them away from them? Definitely. And also would like to add that uh, there's a, a community in Puerto Plata of Germans and Jews that they are they saying they have dual citizenship. Nobody bothers them. So this is basically a you know, a social political move, so, you know. And I would also add to that, um, part of what we're trying to express as the Dominican diaspora is um, hopefully the power behind our voices here as well. And we often see uh, trucks that come around when it's time for elections promoting different mm -hmm. uh, politicians and, you know, many of us vote in the elections in the Dominican Republic and we want to make it clear that as the diaspora we're concerned and we hope that the power of our voice um, politically is also heard. My check. A show geared to hear the voice of young people in New York City. Our mission is to inform of major events, protests, and political agendas that matter to us the most. My name is Eric Pineda, and I am your host of this episode of My Check. Today we are here to discuss a very relevant and sensitive topic. Resolution TC 168-13. The law that strips our Haitian descent, the individuals of the citizenship, and even Dominicans of Haitian descent in Dominican Republic. And why do you guys think the government did this? Because I know for a fact this just didn't vanish of thin air. Like this didn't, this didn't appear. I was trying to research um, facts on why this could happen, of events, certain events that had happened in history that could lead up to this, but I couldn't find anything exact. So I, like, I was wondering to myself, how come this just became so popular and so, like, so like, you know, out there right now in this past September, this really took place now? What has been building up to it? What is the reason behind it? So I'm going to see what you guys know about that and how I can we can help we can help people understand and myself as well because I'm I'm kind of lost on that part. So since since 2007, this has been happening where uh, Dominican Haitian is saying uh, the government does not want to renew their their, their documents. Now with the sentencing, uh, uh, as far as doing research, the Miami Herald wrote an article that this is mainly a, a political move, which uh, the PLD, which is the, the, the political group that's in, in, in charge right now. Um, the opposition, the PRD, had a, a, uh, a, a politician of Dominican Haitian descent, uh, Jose Francisco Peña Gomez. You can definitely, he was a, a great humanitarian, a great politician, did a lot of things for the country. He, he passed away years ago. So most of the Dominican Haitian descent they, they favor the PRD because of Jose Francisco Peña Gomez. So the PLD is trying to, uh, and I'm thinking that that's mainly why they're doing that. So these people cannot vote because uh, through the new law that the president is trying to, trying to present, which is to let the citizen become nationalized, then they're not going to allow to vote and they're not, they're not going to allow to hold uh, political positions. So. It has to do also with the socioeconomic situation in the Dominican Republic, where most of the people that are being affected are living in extreme poverty. You know, they're, they're, they're poor, so, uh, so I don't know what answer I can give you because I, I can't really register, you know, what's happening. And like Janilda said, you know, the Dominican Republic is now part of CARICOM for years. They, they're not welcome, and now it's like this has become a backslash, you know, to, to the country. Uh, I also would like to add that, you know, we also have debt with, you know, with the IMF and, and all the countries, so I don't know, with the United States, so I don't know, they're also behind this, because 
I had a conversation with my father where the United States always copies everything from the U.S. Mm -hmm. So the same immigration law, the, the reform, everything that's going on in the United States, with mostly with, with the Mexican population, now this law is presented and, and it's causing confusion, like Javier said, and kind of separating us uh, as a country and as, a, as, an island, as an island as a whole. Um, I would just say, you know, half I mentioned the U.S., but I would actually say that, you know, the, I think the U.S. would probably never dream of doing something like this. There are mm -hmm. always sectors in the, in the United States Congress that introduce um, laws that say that if you're a child of an undocumented immigrant, you don't get to be a citizen. And those, propos and those proposals have been um, introduced going back, to, you know, many, many years. Um, but that type of thing, um, but they never have the uh, gall, you know, the, the poca vergüenza, you know, the, 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 they ne would never dare to make it retroactive. Um, mm -hmm. Because right. the Constitution says that if you're born in the United States, you are a citizen. Um, and so the Dominican Republic Constitution used to say that, but essentially what this decision did is to say, oh, never mind, that doesn't really mean, what, that, doesn't really mean yeah. that. Um, and so, you know, it's something that maybe in the wildest dreams of some of the most reactionary, conservative, anti-immigrant groups in the United States, they would want to see this done here. But I don't think this is something that would ever pass. Um, because like you said, it would catch, capture in so many people yes. um, that, so, uh, you know, the population of citizens in the United States would diminish maybe by 50 percent. Who knows? So many right. people are the descendant of immigrants, um, that, and y including undocumented immigrants. Um, that that we would you know really um, change as a population, uh, and I just wanted to add one more thing is is when you deprive people of rights, um, you know what does it do to a group? What does it do to Dominican society to have a population that is deprived of rights? That if they are um, you know their rights are abused at work, they can't complain to anybody because they ultimately don't have any rights. They don't have any power. They don't have any you know they can't build economic or social power because they're they're um, prevented from doing so by this by this sort of law, um, you know, ultimately I think it's going to, it's going to be a setback for Dominican society as a whole to have this, this group, even though there are going to be some powerful sectors that can always benefit um, from having a, docu a, a population that doesn't have documents. Right. Um, you, can depri you can pay them less because they, they won't be able to complain, you know, who they're going to complain to. Um, so, so for the society as a whole, this is a negative. For some elite groups that are going to benefit from having uh, a population that they can exploit, you know, they might think is a positive. All right, so definitely listening to this issue, um, something that I know that I want to do is get, definitely get more involved into this because I want to stand up for my people, I want to stand up for myself and, you know, support, support their rights, you know, human basic rights, stuff that, rights that I have here and that I want my people in the island to have. So I want to know as an organization, what are some of the things that we all Dominicans are doing to address the issue? Um, well, both We Are All Dominican and Dominicanos por Derecho, um, throughout the month of February, because as Javier mentioned, it was Indep Dominican Independence Day was uh, last week on the 27th, um, we held a series of events um, to make sure that people are aware of what's going on in the Dominican Republic. We called it, you know, a month in solidarity with Dominicans denationalized by this decision. Um, and <coughs> so, you know, we always hold events uh, so that more people can educate themselves about this. We have a blog, a Facebook, a Twitter, um, to, to with lots of material, including for students, we have a toolkit on our blog. Uh, we are all Dominican NYC. WordPress. Com, um, where we have all sorts of materials and and uh, actions that students can take um, to spread the word about this. You mentioned in the beginning that this is a very sensitive issue, so I think that the more of us that speak out um, about this, like you said, standing up for your people and standing up for yourself, um, because they're one and the same. Um, the more people that do that, um, the more that we're, we have, a s we stand a chance at uh, educating more people and maybe even cha you know changing this, um, the situation. I would just add to Yamila's comment. For those looking to get involved, um, we've been trying to follow the lead of groups in Dominican Republic. There was a group meeting, a conference call with many activists this past Saturday. Um, and we were present on the phone call and taking notes and are trying to guide and direct our actions. So I would say, in addition to checking out our website and um, joining our activities, um, pay attention to the news sources about what Dominican groups are saying in Dominican Republic. There's not a lot of coverage in the United States here, but via Accento, 
and OI, we've been able to try to keep up to date. Um, so for those who are motivated, I would say definitely get involved and join us, but also follow the lead of groups in Dominican Republic who've been doing this work for many years. We don't want to just jump in and try to reinvent the wheel or possibly um, interrupt some of the activities that are already happening on the ground there. Just to, to speak further about some of the events that we uh, um, planned uh, uh, last month, on Friday the 20th we had a press conference where we uh, wrote a letter to the Dominican Republic uh, President Danilo Medina, uh, basically telling him that he needs to uh, present a new le legislation to annul the current uh, ruling that these 200,000 plus people that have been denationalized, that their documents have to be returned to them. Uh, also on the 22nd, we had a data outreach where we was passing flyers to the community, educating people, and we had a great outcome. A lot of people um, really didn't know what was happening, uh, both English and, Sp and, and Spanish speaking um, citizens. I took that day also to, to, um, to film a, a short a docudrama that I, I, I produced and, and wrote. And that was uh, really a lot of great response from, from people. Basically, 90% uh, of them were totally against it. And something that you mentioned at the beginning of the show that imagine if, if they passed a law here where you know, we have to go home because we're no longer citizens, we're all immigrants. So, um, you know, like Javier mentioned, we had a, a vigil on the 27, basically con we're not celebrating Independence Day because our fellow Dominicans, you know, they're denationalized. Um, so, uh, like Javier said, definitely get involved. Uh, there's a, a petition also that's uh, on the website um, that they can sign where we're pushing um, uh, the elected officials here in the New York City of Dominican descent, so they can denounce uh, this ruling in the Dominican Republic. All right, yeah, and the, I was looking back, um, I was looking to you guys' website, Dominican School of Show, and I know you guys had an event held at um, Gregorio Superno High School. Can you elaborate a little more on that? Uh, basically, that was a great day. I was very happy. It was a, 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 a full house. Uh, we had a, a lot of young people. I was able to screen the Daiki drama, a great response from students, uh, teachers that would like to get a copy of this Daiki drama so they can present it to their students and they can create a, a dialogue. Uh, also, there was a, a photo exhibit um, coordinated by, um, by Luis Barrios, who is a, a, a reverend. Uh, like I told you before, he's like a radical reverend because he's uh, fighting for those that don't, for the voiceless ones. So he took two of his students, uh, two John Jay College students, to the border so they can experience, you know, the Dominicanization, like Javila said, of the border, where only the Dominican Republic is in control of, you know. So uh, that was a great event. There was a lot of great response from people, people that want to get in, involved. And uh, I was very happy that that took place. I think that was that's a very clever um, action taking taking a few students to the border because now we're we're not only educating these these students but we're getting the voice out. They have friends. They have friends to tell each other. Listen, this is what's really going on. I have pictures. I have evidence. So then that's that's that was pretty clever and smart because now it's it's as a community that we're you know we're working together. You know. So and then as leaders of of, of social organizations, what are your um your direct demands to those who really want to get involved? Like what are you guys asking? You know. To those people. <laughs> um, well, so the ways that we're asking people to get involved is by um, by speaking out, by having a dialogue with their families. I'm sure a lot of us have relatives that um, have said a lot of anti-Haitian things that maybe even support this this decision. Um, so one of the main things is to start a dialogue within your own family, within your own friends, within your own community, your church, and we can help with that. Um, we, we are always happy to provide support for people who want to organize events, um, even s this, you know, small events with a few people around this issue. Um, we ask people to film video testimonials, giving their opinion um, about what they think, because those make the rounds, you know, they, they, become, they, become, they go viral sometimes, and so we want to make sure that people are, are doing all these things to get the word out. As for our demands for the decision makers, um, we have two sets of demands. As, as you know, we are Dominican Americans. So on the American side, we are asking our elected officials here in New York City, which is, has one of the largest population of Dominicans outside of the Dominican Republic, or the largest population of Dominicans. We're asking them to stand up for us and saying, you know, that this is a violation of human rights and that the, that the, the decision should be uh, overturned, that the, re the nationality of people have, should be respected and recognized and restored. 
Um, so Pre Vice President Biden is going to visit um, the Dominican Republic in March. Uh, so we want to get the word out to him to make sure that he talks about this. Uh, we want our elected officials here to pass a resolution around this in the city council. The city council of Providence, Rhode Island, which has a Dominican-American mayor, uh, passed a resolution against this decision. So um, one of the main things is to get uh, politicians here to express their rejection of this. In the Dominican Republic, we are, uh, we are demanding the restoration of the nationality and the citizenship rights of people that have been affected by this decision. So I think that those are kind of, in general, our demands um, to those two groups. All right. All right, so now let's check out. Um, we just heard what both organizations are up to, some of the things they're doing. Now let's check out some of what we all Dominicans have been up to. Mi esposa es dominicana y mis hijos vienen siendo ecuatorianos dominicanos. Pero lo que yo no estoy de acuerdo es, según derecho internacional, pienso ser que cada ser humano donde nace pertenece, ¿no? Y yo no creo que esto sea una cosa tan justa. Niños, niños que tienen de nacidos en, en Haití, digo en, en Santo Domingo, que a esta edad les quieran quitar la ciudadanía es una injusticia. O es un, un, una cosa política o algo por llamar la atención. Pero no estoy de acuerdo yo con este señor. Y dígalo así al mundo entero, que no estoy de acuerdo con él. Cuando Trujillo había leyes que eran inmorales y eran contra la humanidad, ¿usted la estaba de acuerdo con el Trujillo? Entonces, si eran leyes... Yo no estaba de acuerdo con el oh, Trujillo. Cuando Hitler, pero esas son Hitler leyes. Cuando leyes, hay que respetar la legislación pero de cada país. Pero las legislaciones se, 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 no, se adecúan de acuerdo, a, como, es de acuerdo a las cuestiones del país, no a que, que uno le dé la gana. No, 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 no. de eso. A usted nadie le ha dicho que a los haitianos lo van a sacar de allá. Una persona que nació en 1929 en la República Dominicana es dominicano. ¿Y quién ha dicho lo contrario? Usted lo dijo. Usted lo dijo. Usted lo dijo. Usted dijo que haitiano es haitiano el otro. Una cosa es. Ninguno de nosotros lo está parando aquí. Está bien. la cabeza. Sáquese eso la cabeza y si usted, si usted, si usted, si usted se muere por dinero con su vida, ese es su problema, no de nosotros. A veces. Me, digo, oye lo que te a voy a decir. Soy dominicano, a veces. Si no sigo hablando, voy a perjudicar. No soy dominicano Ay, como los miembros de esa corte. No soy, yo Más soy un ser humano. Un ser humano, igual que usted. Dominicano. Soy yo. Dominicano no soy el como los miembros. Y ahora mismo protege tampoco protege su patria y lucha eso por mentira, su patria. Usted es lo que está hablando. Mentira, a favor estamos... de un grupo. Mira, no oye, oye, oye. Canadá, Estados Unidos, no, no, Francia. ¿A quién le está vendiendo la... Lo que están a, haciendo esta vagabundería? ¿a quién? Que no, 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 no. La vagabundería la está haciendo los gobiernos dominicanos que le ha vendido la mayoría del territorio dominicano a los empresarios extranjeros. El este del país, el menos de los españoles, la romana. Que de los gringos. No defienden contra el imperio oh, de Dios. Estados Unidos. Alright, so um, as a community, I want to know who are we targeting because now I, I include myself as part of this because from now on I'm definitely gonna take um action and I want you know like I said earlier I want to stand up for my people. So who are we targeting by doing this, um these events? Is it politician DR politicians here as I know you mentioned earlier, um Dominicans is La Isla or Haitians? Who, who exactly, it could be as well youth, um, um, my generation, you know, because I feel like now with, with, um, with such uh, explosion of media, Twitter, you know, the things, we can get the word out maybe faster than another community can. So I want to hear a little bit about that, but we target as a group. As a group, I know that we had had press conferences, and um, one thing that I, I mentioned is that I wanted to, we all agree that we needed to involve the Dominican community first. Uh, for them to know uh, because like Janila said and what the docu docu drama presents is that we have this conversation behind closed doors that we're you know so anti-Haitian and anti-black so we need to bring that out and we need to confront people and say you know this is not right this is a violation of human rights you know you should not discriminate people just because of the color of their skin or descendancy that's mainly um, the people that we want to uh, really approach first 
uh, Janilda mentioned the politicians. Uh, but secondly, we also want people to, to know what's happening in our country. And that's something that happened on the day that I reached that people did not know what were going on, what was going on. And they wanted to get involved. They, they wanted to, you know, get more flyers and talk to their parents, you know, to see, to see what's going on. So that's mainly our target. You know, our family, the Dominican community, uh, the politicians, Dominican uh, elected officials, and the youth, because we need to get the youth involved for them to know what's going on in, in, in the in Quisqueya, the Española, you know, the entire island. I would add to Jefe's comment that everyone can be involved. You can use whatever capacity you have, whatever uh, professional circles you have. I know that um, the American, uh, the Association of Black Anthropologists put out a statement against the sentence. Mm. There have been lawyers who have been organizing on a national level. The National Bar Association, I believe, has also made a statement. So whatever networks you have, whatever uh, groups you're a part of, I think you can use the power of those groups to express your um, concern. And for students or, or young groups, I think uh, what you said is spot on when we think about the civil rights movement. There were students who were really at the forefront and young people at the forefront of these movements. So I think uh, you know, everyone should stand up and use whatever circles they have access to. And Yanilda mentioned the toolkit, which provides a lot of information. There's a film called The Birthright Crisis, which mm -hmm. was created by Haitian women for Haitian refugees, produced by Miriam Neptune, a great piece, much like half Face Peace. Um, that could be screened in the classroom, that could be screened at someone's home um, and spark a discussion. We even have discussion questions that could help guide, you know, folks. So um, I say use whatever sector or facilities one has access to. Definitely. So have a laugh. Um, what do you hope the impact of organization will be on the people watching this, the people that are getting educated on this issue? We hope that people will stand up in whatever capacity they have to speak out against it and the sentence and ultimately that uh, citizenship rights will be restored to those who were initially entitled to these uh, rights under the 2010 Constitution um, or before the 2010 Constitution. So uh, that's our ultimate hope. I'd say also that uh, migratory policies in Dominican Republic improve that uh, kind of anti-Haitianism on a social level in Dominican Republic also improved. Um, but at the forefront uh, right now, we're advocating for the restoration of citizenship rights for Dominican nationals. Yeah, I mean, I think the point that we want to really drive home, um, particularly um, with our, the, the name that we use, we are all Dominican. The reason we chose that name is because the, the constitutional court is trying to say these people are not Dominican. They're trying to define what it means to be Dominican, and we're, we're stopping and we're saying no. Um, you know, Dominicans, bor people born to Dominican parents in the United States, they're Dominican. Uh, if one of your parents is Dominican and the other parent is French, you're Dominican. Um, if you are of Haitian descent and you were born in the Dominican Republic, you're Dominican. Um, and so we are not going to allow the, this constitution, um, this constitutional court to uh, fracture our community by trying to say that some people are not a part of it. Uh, in his, um, in his, his equivalent of the State of the, the Union, the Dominican president actually said, you know, we don't want anybody to be left out of the train of progress. We don't want anybody to le be left out of the society that we're creating. Um, and, and obviously he's supporting this court decision and so we don't think that he's being truthful about that. Um, we are all Dominican means that uh, we are going to um, work within our Dominican community, Dominican American community to make sure that there is more tolerance of people regardless of um, your national origin, the color of your skin, um, you know, your sexual orientation and any other things that, um, you know, the state is trying to say don't make you Dominican. All right, so, um, so lastly, I want to hear everybody elaborate this question because it's something that I feel like I have a, a perspective on, which I'm going to give you know, later on. But um, what does justice look like for a Haitian and Dominican community? If this lies, all of us are in revolt, does it fix all our problems? Like, are we going to have the same rights at the end of the day? Um, I mean, the way I viewed it was, like, all right, this, this law, you know, it, it, gets, it gets rejected or everything goes back to normal. But... Morally, are we still? Do we still have the same rights? Uh, do we still see Haitians as as minority? Uh, is how is that going to change? What does justice really look like for our people? Not 
So forget about the government for us, you know, ourselves, one another. How are we going to treat each other? How is that going to look? So I would like to hear everybody's opinion on this one. I think it's a great question. It yeah. brings to mind for me immediately uh, the civil rights movement in the United States and the passing of the Civil Rights Act in 1965. And we can see how laws may change overnight, but people's attitudes and perceptions and yes. ideals yeah. don't change overnight. Right. So as much as we are um, moving forward uh, towards the change uh, of the law, I agree that there needs to be a lot more than that um, in terms of the ways in which everyday people treat each other, view one another, um, and the ways in which the government is creating its policies, even beyond 168.13, uh, particularly in relation to migration um, in Dominican Republic as well. So I think the project would need to continue beyond uh, 168. Yeah, we need to continue the, the, the conversation. We need to continue with, you know, with the education of you know, human rights, of how to treat people the same way. And I'm working on the next piece, which has to do with religion, because, you know, 85% of the population of the population in Dominican Republic is religious. So, you know, you look at someone and, and you think, oh, I don't like you because you're Haitian. But then you go to church and you, you know, think about God and everything is God. But then you're looking at your neighbor as, as someone stranger, as, a, as an alien, or you don't belong here. So... We need to continue with education and, and really um, really defeat those few that are, are trying to separate us uh, as a community. Because, uh, like I said, I was born and raised in DR. Uh, I grew up with lack of electricity, lack of water, uh, you know, horrible infrastructure and transportation. So the issues, those issues are, st are still there. So who's benefiting of, of, you know, in the country? You know, there's a disparity between the rich and the poor. So the Dominican of Haitian descent are not the problem, or the Haitians are the problem. It, the people in charge who are now distributing, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, the funds, the richness, you know, equally, you know, you know between all the cities of, of the United States. And uh, Javier, I mentioned earlier, as Dominican in the diaspora, we need to continue to um, have these workshops and this outreach and, and, and talk to people. Uh, you know, just for us to love to one another. The, the, those people, they just want to have a, a, a living just like anyone else, a roof over their head, a job, you know, health insurance, you know, for, the, for their children, education. So, you know, that's it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Javier's point is, is right on in that um, the, the, the changing of this law, of this decision is just a starting point. It's not our end point. Um, even though we want citizenship rights to be restored, we think this law really brings to light a lot of the injustices that were already there. Um, and so if, it, if we can use it as a tool to talk about those injustices, we're going to do that. But we definitely don't want to stop once, you know, if, if we were able to succeed in getting it overturned. Definitely. All right, so we've exposed the issue. Um, we've talked about it plenty, and we've mentioned some of the actions taking place. For right now, it's up to us to step up and own you know, take ownership of this and really support ourselves, support our community. And remember, we're doing this because we want to make a change. New York City is heavily populated by Dominicans who have rights in the island. And what we're trying to do is to get those voices of those people out there, you know. Um, as Dominicans, it's our responsibility to stand up for our country, which is, includes Haitians and Dominicans of Haitian descent. It's our duty and it's our right to step up. We must support. Don't let this be okay because it's definitely not okay. Take action and help us build our future. It's definitely been a, pre a pleasure interviewing all of you. Spend the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for having us.